Hi folks, this tutorial will introduce some of the great improvements in iClone 7's face puppet system, including new full face profiles and a powerful new approach to solo facial feature puppeteering, all using hugely enhanced morphs and improved muscle association for every part of the face. Ok, let's get started. Experienced iClone users will be familiar with the face puppet interface, but even for new users, it's an amazingly simple and intuitive way to drive facial animation using your mouse. Here on the left, we have full face profiles of various types, from individual characters through to universal and stylized options. Let me show you how these work on the new Reillusion characters Jade and Zane. Character profiles provide subtly different animation controls for each character, meaning that you can animate quickly and easily and be sure that the way a character smiles or frowns or looks surprised will be unique to that character. Now, for speed when previewing the full face profiles, you can actually switch profiles just by using hotkeys on your keyboard. These keys are Q, W, E, R, T and Y, and as I use them, you'll see the selection switch from one profile to another. Selecting another character now and running through variations of angry, happy and scared profiles. Now by default character profiles have associated head and eye rotation but for more control you can turn these off in feature select if you wish but they do allow you to animate very quickly. Now full face profiles aren't only for specific characters you can use one character's profile on a completely different character if you wish. Also there are now stylized as well as universal options. Stylized are designed for more extreme as well as cartoon characters whilst universal profiles provide a one-size-fits-all approach with mouth closed and mouth open options for use during lip sync as well as when a character is not speaking. Now good facial animation is all about control and with a mouse driven system like this it really helps to preview the profile you're going to use before making the recording so that you know just how far you need to move the mouse to get the expressions you want. And to give you even more control, there's a new strength slider which allows you to exaggerate or limit the degree of expression you'll get when you start animating. Also, when using a particular character profile, if you want to adjust the strength of parts of the face, as well as eye and head rotation, you can open up the weight panel and edit these values yourself in order to get the effect you want. Ok, so far we've looked at full face profiles, previewing and ways to control animation strength. Let's move on to recording. It really is very straightforward, but there are a couple of important points which I think are worth mentioning. So, first, I simply select the character I want to animate and select the full face profile I want to use for recording. Here, I've selected the female character, and first, I'm going to make her look happy. Now, I want to make her appear to be sad instead. So I'm going to record over the previous animation clip, but notice that I'm unchecking the Blend Data on Next Recording checkbox. This means I'll completely overwrite the previous clip. But if I want to mix the effect of different profiles, I'll keep the Blend Data on Next Recording checkbox checked. Here, I'll mix the effect of the happy profile with the sad profile. As you can see, we now have two recording passes blended using different full face profiles. And this is important, because Face Puppet allows you to do as many passes as you want, refining the animation as you go. And whilst it's really quick and easy to do this with full face profiles, the real power of this blended animation approach comes in when you start using solo feature selection too. Here on the right of the Face Puppet interface is the solo feature selection panel. At first glance, this looks deceptively simple. In fact, you may have noticed that when selecting many of the full face profiles, some of the features here show up in green, which indicates the primary muscle groups which are activated by a profile. But if we deselect the current profile and click on a feature here, you'll see that for each individual feature, there are lots of new feature profiles which show up as thumbnails below the feature selection head. You can hover over these thumbnails with your mouse to see a tooltip of what they do when selected. So now, I'll quickly demonstrate some individual feature selections and their profiles. You'll notice the arrows on the profile icons indicate which mouse movements have an effect. 
The system is specifically designed to allow you to create virtually any natural part expression, from subtle eyebrow movements through to very particular profiles for the mouth, which allow you to open and close the lips in various ways, both to help with improving lip sync, as well as to allow many kinds of bared teeth and tight-lipped expressions. So for each individual feature, you have a number of profiles which you can select. And once you have selected a feature profile, you can select another feature and another profile. In fact, you can combine these selections in any which way you want. But here, I'm selecting both eyebrows and a simple up-down profile. Let's record that. OK, so now I'm going to build up a facial animation just using solo feature selections. You'll notice that I'm keeping Blend Data on Record checked in order to allow each pass to blend rather than overwrite the previous clip. I'm adding some lower face motion first, mixing the cheeks, mouth and jaw with the existing eyebrow motion I've already recorded. Next, I'll add some head motion. Now let's give the animation some life by adding some eye rotation. But first, I'll turn off the auto blink function so that you can see just how easy it is to insert blinks just by left clicking and to close the eyes by left click and hold. I'll preview the eyes first before recording. And I'll record some eye motions and blinks, blending them into the existing animation. So that's quite a simple animation created purely using solo feature profiles. But as I said earlier, you can also blend solo features with full face profiles. Here's a quick example. First, selecting and recording a full face profile. Next, Selecting solo feature profiles and blending with the original animation. And another tip. If you find that recording at normal speed is just too fast for you to get the control that you want, you can record at half speed by pressing the Enter key instead of the spacebar when you record. And you can also set the playback rate to by frame on the play bar to make things as slow as possible for recording. This will give you much more control. Okay, so far we've looked at full face profiles and solo feature selections and how to simply record and blend these in multiple animation passes. Now let's focus a bit more closely on an individual character and how to use Face Puppet to create more controlled and naturalistic animation. I'm just clearing the existing timeline puppet clip. Now I'm going to create an animation where the character begins by looking surprised, then gets concerned, and finally becomes really angry. I'm clearing my existing feature selection before starting with one of the universal profiles, in this case Full Face Surprise Closed. Previewing first, then recording. I'm using 50% recording speed, as well as the playback by frame setting for control. Now, I'm just blocking things in to start with. Next, I'll use a fear profile to give the character a concerned look. You'll notice that I'm returning to the default expression by the time I finish each recording. This is to give more flexibility for editing later on. So now I'm finishing my first pass of blocking in, simply using the angry profile from the universal expressions. OK, that gives me some basic expressions, but now I want to time them so that they're exactly where I want them on the timeline. So I'll edit the individual puppet clips by breaking and deleting parts, as well as moving the clips around. I want the character to begin surprised, then look concerned quite shortly afterwards, then build up to looking angry and finishing on that. 
I'm removing sections of clip which I don't want and using transitions to blend the areas I want to keep. And now the animation has the primary expressions where I want them, I'll start using Face Puppet's solo feature to make some enhancements to the brows, eyes and mouth. First, I'm simply enhancing the brows up and down motion. You'll see that this pass blends with the previously edited clips to produce a new single clip on the timeline. Now I'll edit the eyelids, making them wide and making them squint when I want. But this time, instead of doing a single pass throughout the timeline, I'll do this at specific points. One of iClone 7's new features is that you can start and stop blending puppet clips at any point on the timeline, which again gives you more control. Next, I want to make the character look more surprised at the start and much more angry at the end. So I'll use the mouth and jaw solo feature selections to enhance these. First, opening the mouth during the start section. Then, increasingly baring the teeth and snarling as the character becomes more angry. Next, I'll add some cheek and nose enhancement, this time in a single pass through the whole clip. But it's important to remember when working with Face Puppet that you aren't limited to single linear passes. As I've shown, you can blend in new clips at any point, and if you don't like particular sections or you want to retime them, you can break the clip into pieces and delete and move sections around using transitions to blend between clips. So let's start this sequence with the surprised mouth open expression holding it a little using the timeline clip speed function, then moving into the rest of the animation. And to finish off, we'll add some eye and head motion using solo feature. Just a few subtle movements here to echo the character's expressions. Now, Face Puppet can be used at many levels, from quick, single linear passes using full face profiles, solo features or a mixture of the two, through to multiple non-linear passes, along with clip editing on the timeline, to really start polishing timings and expressions. But there's more. Using the system, along with the new face key approach in iCloud 7, allows you to combine Face Puppet's mouse-driven expression recording and editing with an advanced set of expression keyframing tools. And face key, will be the subject of another tutorial. Thanks for watching.